Apple just announced the new M1 Pro and M1 Max, and their performance claims at the event are very impressive. How will the new M1 chips compare to the competition from AMD and Intel? Let's get into it. Apple announced the new M1 Pro and M1 Max SOCs. I say SOC or system on a chip, as you can't look at Apple Silicon in the traditional way of a CPU and GPU due to the higher level of integration Apple has done with its unified memory arrangement. But I want to break down the specs and claims and understand how these new chips will perform and how will they match up to CPUs and GPUs from the likes of AMD and Intel. Now I watched the Apple event and they just talked about two new SOCs in the M1 Pro and M1 Max. However, going to the Apple store after the event and I was surprised to learn that there are actually five variants, three M1 Pros and two M1 Max SOCs. For me, it's confusing to see them just on the order page, so I decided to put them all on a table with all the specs of interest to me. I listed the two M1 variants from last year, then the three M1 Pro variants, and finally the two variants of the M1 Max. Now you can come back and pause the video later if you want to study all the differences in specs. However, to keep this short, I will start with a simplified table with just the full version of the M1, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max SOCs. The M1 is advertised as 8 cores. They technically have 8 cores, however they have 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. This is part of ARM's big little architecture with the performance core, the big core, and the efficiency core, the little core. These cores are not the same and they have significantly different performance levels. The claim it is 8 cores is technically true, but technically they are different cores with different performance levels and Apple should do better in explaining this to its customers. The new M1 Pro and M1 Max now have up to double the performance cores, but half the efficiency cores. So that's 10 cores with 8 performance cores and just 2 efficiency cores. Apple claims the CPU performance is 70% better, and we now have some Geekbench 5 scores to test that claim. The M1 Max and M1 Pro single core speeds are in the order of 1750. And when I compare my scores in my review of the M1 iMac at 1748, they are very much the same, at least to within the run to run variation you expect to see in Geekbench. That tells me the performance core in the new M1 Pro and M1 Max is very much the same and running at the same speed as in the original M1 chip. If we look at the Geekbench multi core score, we see upwards of about 12,500 for these 10 core parts. Looking back at my M1 iMac scores of 7,624, you can see the performance uplift is about 65%. Comparing the multi-core scores against Apple's lineup, as I showed in my M1 Max performance video, you can see the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips at 12,500 are just faster than anything Apple has produced, with the exception of an 18-core iMac Pro or any Mac Pro with 16 cores or higher. Now back then, I predicted a score of just over 13,000, however, that was based on the prevailing rumor that the new chip would have 12 cores, 8 performance cores, and 4 efficiency. Well, we have 10 cores with 8 performance and 2 efficiency. Even with the 2 fewer efficiency cores, the score is slightly higher than I would have predicted, and I suspect that could have something to do with the faster memory bus at 200 gigabytes per second versus the original M1 at 68 gigabytes per second. Also in that video, I estimated the Cinebench R23 score to be 13,268. Well, with two fewer efficiency cores, the performance will be lower, and I now expect the M1 Pro and M1 Max with 10 cores to score just over 12,000 at about 12,160. This of course assumes full performance over the entire run, and at 30 watts of CPU power, I fully expect the new MacBook Pro fans to keep the temps down and provide full performance under 100% CPU loads, as seen in programs like Cinebench. What I am not certain of is if the MacBook Pro cooling fans can keep the temps down under both full CPU load and a full GPU load. So now that we understand that performance will dominate all of Apple's previous computers, with the exception of a couple of high-end desktop Pro models, how will these scores compare against CPUs from Intel and AMD? For this comparison, I will use 8-core processors from the last few generations to compare them against the M1 Pro and M1 Max. For the Intel CPUs, I will use the 8-core 16-thread processors in the 9th Gen i9-9900K introduced in 2018, the 10th Gen i7-10700K introduced in 2020, and the 11th Gen i7-11700K introduced in 2021. 
For the AMD CPUs, I will use the 8-core 16-thread processors in the Ryzen 7 2700X introduced in 2018. The Zen 2 based Ryzen 7 3700X introduced in 2019 and the Zen 3 based Ryzen 7 5800X introduced in 2020. In Cinebench R23 multi-core performance, starting with Intel, we see the i9-9900K score is just 2.5% faster, so it's about the same level as the new M1 Pro and Max. The 10th gen i7-10700K is 9.4% faster than the 10-core M1 Pro, and the 11th gen i7-11700K is 23% faster than the M1 Pro. Now looking at the AMD Ryzen 7 processors and starting with the 2nd gen Ryzen 2700X, the Ryzen part is 16% slower. The 3rd gen Ryzen in the 3700X is only 2.8% faster, so about the same level as the M1 Pro. Finally, the 4th gen Ryzen in the 5800X, it is 25.4% faster than the M1 Pro. So we see the latest gen CPUs from AMD and Intel ahead of the M1 Pro. For Cinebench R23 single core, based on the Geekbench 5 single core scores, I am going to make the assumption that the Cinebench R23 single core performance for the M1 Pro and M1 Max will be the same performance as the original M1. And when we look at the scores together, then we can see the M1 trails only the Intel 11th gen Rocket Lake CPU in the i7-11700K. And with Intel launching their 12th gen Auto Lake CPU soon, the leaks would suggest the lead will be extended even further. And if you want to understand what to expect for Intel's 12th gen, click on my video in the link above. Now I know many of you might be thinking, you can't compare the MacBook Pro laptop CPU with desktop CPUs. You have to compare against AMD and Intel's laptop CPUs. Okay, that is a fair argument and I can compare in a minute. However, we know that in the M1, Apple used the same processor in the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, which is the same as in the desktop M1 iMac, which is the same as in the desktop M1 Mac Mini. So when Apple does release the new desktop Mac Mini and new desktop iMac, they will use the same M1 Pro and M1 Max SOCs. So these comparisons are valid against desktop CPUs. But let's consider the laptops. Now I don't have data on the latest and greatest laptops, however Jared over at Jared's Tech does some great laptop reviews and he makes great charts. So if you like data like me, check out his channel and I'll leave a link in the description below. In his recent review comparing the latest 8 core laptop CPUs from Intel and AMD, he showed some Cinebench R23 scores. He compared Intel's 11th gen Tiger Lake CPU in the i7-11800H to AMD's latest Zen 3 architecture mobile CPU in the Ryzen 7 5800H. If I add my estimated performance for both single and multi-core scores, you can see that in single core performance, the M1 Max is faster than the Ryzen CPU by 6.7% and tied with the Intel CPU. In multi-core performance, and this gets tricky since they both have power limits depending on if it's plugged in or running on battery, simply if running on battery, the M1 Max wins. When plugged into the wall, the M1 is behind by about 9%. Comparing the performance in Geekbench 5, the 10-core M1 Pro and M1 Max are the leader by 10% in single-core and 30% in multi-core score. Apple is the clear winner in Geekbench. With the M1 Pro and M1 Max, when it comes to a laptop and the mobile experience, I don't think Apple really has any competition due to its tremendous performance per watt efficiency advantage. Now that we have an idea of what to expect for CPU performance, let's talk about GPU performance. The M1 with 8 GPU cores has 2.6 teraflops of performance. The M1 Pro with 16 GPU cores has 5.2 teraflops of performance. While the M1 Max with 32 cores has 10.4 teraflops of performance. As the GPU cores double, so does the performance. It seems they did not change the GPU core from the M1, so the performance scaling seems very linear. Now as I showed in my comparison video of the new M1 iMac versus the old Intel iMac, the AMD Radeon RX 560 is in a similar class as the 8-core GPU in the M1 for most apps, although the M1 was clearly faster in the GFX Metal benchmark. With that as a reference, I would expect the performance of the 16-core GPU to double and that would be similar to a Radeon RX 5500 XT or RX 580. 
you will find that the memory bandwidth of these cards are similar to the memory bandwidth available to the 16 core GPU in the M1 Pro. Then for the big 32 core GPU in the M1 Max, I would expect the performance to double again and be better than an RX 5700 XT, but maybe not as good as an RX 6700 XT. The memory bandwidth of an M1 Max at 400 gigabytes per second is similar to these GPUs. For Apple to come from making GPU cores for iPhones and iPads and then be able to scale up to this level of performance this quickly is very impressive. And to do so while using so much less energy is nothing short of amazing. Now unlike any GPU I have ever tried to purchase for the past year, I was able to order a 10 core M1 and it'll be here next week and I can't wait to benchmark the performance of the CPU and GPU. Get subscribed and ring that bell if you want to see that and hit that like button if you want to see more content like this. I'll show a couple of charts on how I expect the 8 core M1 Pro with its 6 performance and 2 efficiency cores compares with the 6 core desktop counterparts from Intel and AMD. If you're interested in how Intel's 12th gen CPU will perform or interested in previous discussions on M1X, click on one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.